Section 13 of Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 2. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Brian Keenan. Rhode Island, Thursday, 16th. Came to Newport. The roads were comparatively good. The ferry three miles wide, which, however, we safely crossed in a spacious open boat, excellent in its kind. In Newport are two Presbyterian meeting houses one new divinity so-called three others regular baptists new lights and sabbatarians one friends meeting and one episcopal church we stayed two nights at our kind friends brother green a new light baptist i lectured the second night from isaiah sixty four one through seven there was some life amongst the people although it was late and the congregation like our lord's disciples before his passion there is also a jew synagogue and a Moravian chapel. I expect before many years the Methodists will also have a house for worship here. I feel the state of this people. They are settled upon their lees, and want emptying from vessel to vessel. My soul enjoys peace. Saturday, 18. We go hence to Providence, attended by our kind friend for guide. Blessed be the Lord for a refreshing rain the last night. On this journey I feel much humbled. I am unknown, and have small congregations, to which I may add a jar in sentiment. But I do not dispute. My soul is brought into close communion. I should not have felt for these people and for the preachers as I now do, had I not visited them. Perhaps I may do something for them in a future day. We came to Bristol, and should have gone farther, but Captain G. saw us, and took us to his house. At the request of a few persons, I preached in the courthouse to about a hundred people, and enforced, The Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost, and found a degree of liberty. Some time ago there was the beginning of a work here, but the few souls who began are now discouraged from meeting together. I fear religion is extinguished by confining it too much to church and Sunday service, and reading of sermons. I feel that I am not among my own people although I believe there are some who fear God, and I find reason to hope that souls have gone to glory from this town. Sunday 19 Came to Providence. I attended the ministry of Mr. M., a Baptist, in the forenoon, and Mr. S., a new light, in the afternoon. In the evening I preached with some life on Isaiah 61, 1 through 3. There are Presbyterians, Episcopalians, independents or congregationalists here. But the Baptists appear to be the leading people. I found a few gracious souls and some seeking. It has been a season of deep exercise with me while here. I have had some weighty sensations. I think the Lord will revive his work in Providence. Monday 20 I visited some serious families that truly love and fear God. The afternoon I spent very agreeably with the old prophet Mr. Snow, aged about seventy years. He was awakened by the instrumentality of Gilbert Tennant, whose memory I revere. He told me much about Mr. Whitefield, and old times, and of the ministers of old times, of himself, his awakening, and conversion to God, of his riding thirty miles to Newport, in exceeding cold weather, to bring Mr. Tennant to Providence. Having obtained more knowledge of the people, my subject was Galatians 6.14, plain and pointed. My audience was serious and attentive. I endeavored to show, one, what it is for a man to glory in a thing, two, what men glory in which is not the cross of Christ, three, what it is to glory in the cross of Christ, four, how a person may know when he glories in the cross of Christ, namely, by the world's being crucified to him, and he unto the world. The people here appear to be prudent, active, frugal, cultivating a spirit of good family economy, and they are kind to strangers. They have had frequent revivals of religion. I had faith to believe the Lord would shortly visit them again, and that even we shall have something to do in this town. We rested a day at Easton, and appointed meeting at five o'clock. 
I had good freedom on Acts 17.27, and the people felt the word. We have had a solemn, happy, and solitary retreat, and my soul entered into renewed life. Massachusetts, Thursday, 23. We rode through dust and heat to Boston. I felt much pressed in spirit, as if the door was not open. As it was court time, we were put to some difficulty in getting entertainment. It was appointed for me to preach at Murray's church, not at all pleasing to me, and that which made it worse was that I had only about twenty or thirty people to preach to in a large house. It appeared to me that those who professed friendship for us were ashamed to publish us. On Friday evening I preached again. My congregation was somewhat larger, owing perhaps to the loudness of my voice. The sinners were noisy in the streets. My subject was Revelations 3, 17, 18. I was disturbed and not at liberty, although I sought it. I have done with Boston until we can obtain a lodging, a house to preach in, and some to join us. Some things here are to be admired in the place and among the people. Their bridges are great works and none are ashamed of labor. Of their hospitality I cannot boast. In Charleston, wicked Charleston, six years ago, a stranger, I was kindly invited to eat and drink by many, here by none. There are, I think, nine meeting-houses of the establishment. Friends Meeting House, one. San Dominians, one. Universalists, one. Roman Catholics, one. Baptists, two. Episcopalians, too. The Methodists have no house, but their time may come. I preached at Slade's Tavern on my way to Lynn on If Our Gospel Be Hid, It Is Hid to Them That Are Lost. I was agreeably surprised to find a house raised for the Methodists. As a town, I think Lynn the perfection of beauty. It is seated on a plain, under a range of craggy hills, and open to the sea. There is a promising society, an exceedingly well-behaved congregation. These things, doubtless, made all pleasing to me. My first subject was Romans 8.33. In the afternoon, Acts 4.12. Here we shall make a firm stand, and from this central point, from Lynn, shall the light of Methodism and of truth radiate through the state. Our brother Johnson is simple-hearted, and hearty in the cause. We owe our entertainment and house for worship chiefly to him. Tuesday, 28. Road to Marblehead. When I entered this town, my heart was more melted towards its inhabitants than to any in those parts, with the exception of Lynn. After consultation and some altercation among themselves, the committee invited me to preach in Mr. Storey's meeting-house, which I did accordingly at four o'clock, on Acts 26, 1718. I was led to speak alarmingly, whilst I pointed out the gospel as descriptive of their misery and need of mercy. Brother Lee preached in the evening to a great number of people in and about Mr. Martin's house. Next morning, weak as I was, I could not forbear speaking to them on, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Wednesday 29. Row to Salem. Here are five meeting-houses, two of them on the new divinity plan, that is, regeneration the first work. No prayer, repentance, or faith until this is accomplished. The other three belong to the establishment, one Episcopalian and one friend's meeting-house. I found no access to any. I lectured in the courthouse on Romans 5, 6-9. I looked upon the greater part of my congregation as judges and I talked until they, becoming weary, began to leave me. I have done with Salem, until we can get a better stand. I had the curiosity to visit the Calvary of the witches, that is, those who were destroyed on the charge of witchcraft. I saw the graves of many innocent good people, who were put to death, suffering persecution from those who had suffered persecution. Such and so strangely contradictory is man. I felt weakness of body, and deep exercise of mind, and at times good liberty in speaking. I am now convinced that the Methodists, as a body, have the most religion, 
and am more and more confirmed in my choice. We rode to Manchester. Mr. Foster received us with great kindness. The select men granted us the privilege of the meeting-house. I lectured on Malachi 3.13 at five o'clock. Here are some feeling and understanding souls. This place has been visited for many years, and a society kept up, although the ministers did not favor the stir. Of this work, Father Lee's ministry, an aged man of that country and town, has been the principal means. For a long time he has faithfully stood his ground, praying with and exhorting the people. We were invited to lodge at a place where provision is made for the entertainment of ministers, and in the morning money was offered. I declined accepting their invitation and refused their money. Friday, July 1. Came to L's to dinner. After praying with them and speaking to each in the family, I left them to God. Thence I proceeded to tease and preached at Brown's Folly to many people. My subject, Luke 2, 10. Saturday 2. I returned home to Brother J's in Lynn. Sunday 3. My first subject was The Great Salvation. In the afternoon I spoke on Titus 2, 11, 12, and had liberty. In the evening my subject was Matthew 11, 28-30. The congregation was attentive, and my mind enjoyed sweet peace. Although, outwardly, we were uncomfortable, the meeting-house being open, and the weather very cool for the season. I feel as if God would work in these states, and give us a great harvest. My intervals of leisure have been spent in close application to my Bible, and reading Baxter's call to the unconverted. Monday 4. I took the benefit of the sea air, and began visiting. Tuesday 5. My soul is in great peace and love. Here it is a day of small things. The people have been neglected. But now the Lord has opened their eyes. Oh, what skill and patience and wisdom are needful to deal with souls! I was happy in meeting the women in class. I found but few believers, but I do believe that God will bring them all into full liberty. Wednesday 6. Found my mind stayed upon God. In the evening I had a large, attentive congregation. Thursday 7. I was engaged closely in reading. I visited and conversed freely with two families. I am informed that Lynn and Linfield afford upwards of 2,200 souls, 1791. This day, Brother Jesse Lee put a paper into my hand, proposing the election of not less than two nor more than four preachers from each conference to form a general conference in Baltimore in December 1792, to be continued annually. Saturday 9. I preached a sacramental sermon on Let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Sunday 10. Preached on the Great Supper, Luke 14, a very solemn, baptizing, and sacramental season. The people chose to receive the elements sitting, as is the practice amongst Presbyterians. In the afternoon I enforced, What shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? At night I spoke on, These shall go away into everlasting punishment. The Lord was among the people, and I hope and trust some real good was done. Monday 11 I labor under deep exercises of soul. The sea bath I found to strengthen me. In the evening I met the men's class in Lynn, and was led to hope that a glorious work of God will be wrought here. Several people are under awakenings at this time. My staying so long among them may be of the Lord. Tuesday 12. We had a blessed rain after nearly a month's drought. Wednesday 13. We came through Waltham, Sudbury, and Marlborough. At this last place there is a grand meeting-house, and one not less elegant in its kind for the minister. 
Thence we proceeded on through Northbury and Shrewsbury, to Worcester, through rain, and with pain and weariness. Mr. Chandler received us with kindness more than common, and courtesy anxious to please, calling his family together with softness of address, and in all things else being agreeable, perhaps more so than any man I have met with in America. This reception shall comfort us a little in our toil. From Worcester we journeyed on, passing through Leicester, Spencer, Brookfields, and another town. We dined at a place where the people are united and do not wish to divide the parish. Their fathers, the Puritans, divided the kingdom and the church too, and when they could not obtain liberty of conscience in England, they sought it here among wild men and beasts. At Greaves's tavern I saw a man from Vermont, who said the number of their inhabitants was ninety thousand. He invited me to send preachers among them. Friday 15. My mind has been dejected. Satan has assaulted me. I could not be fixed in prayer as I desired. We have made it one hundred and eight miles from Lynn to Springfield. I want to be with the Methodists again. Oh, how unworthy of such fellowship! Yet am I seated among the princes of thy people. At six o'clock I delivered a discourse in Mr. C.'s house, on, It is time to seek the Lord, till he come and rain righteousness upon you. The people were a little moved, and one sister under deep conviction. This place is a haunt of soldiery, the armory being kept here. There appears to be little religion among the inhabitants. Connecticut, Sunday 17. Passed through Suffield to Turkey Hills, where I had a large and very criticizing congregation, to whom I preached my first discourse on John 7:17. 7, my second subject was Hebrews 6, 1. There were some feeling hearts present. The Lord will work here. On Monday I had a crowd at Proquinac, in a schoolhouse, to whom I preached on 2 Corinthians 4, 1, 2. Some were frightened, some melted, and some were offended. We came to Windsor. Mr. S. received us kindly, but did not fail to let us know how lightly he thought of us and of our principles. Here my feelings were very gloomy, and I secretly wished myself out of the way. I went to the schoolhouse and found it crowded with people. The Lord lifted me up whilst I opened and applied Galatians 3.22. I think I was given to see and feel the true state of these people. Some of them were melted, and praised God for the gospel. Tuesday 19 I came to the city of Hartford. At Mr. S.'s meeting-house I was attended by three ministers. I was clear not to keep back any part of the truth, whilst I enforced Luke 7, 23. The people were mostly serious and attentive. I had an interview with Dorcas Brown, who was converted forty years ago, and in the history of whose experience there were some remarkable manifestations of the power of God, and of the interposition of his providence in answer to prayer in times of persecution and violence. Her son's case was also remarkable. He had been captured by the Indians, and was returned killed. In contradiction to this account, and the general belief, she pronounced that she should again see him in the flesh. Contrary to the expectation of all but herself, he did return, after an absence of three years and eight months. Wednesday 20 At East Hartford I felt more than usually assisted on Luke 19.10. I had an attentive, feeling congregation. On Thursday we had a gracious shower at the quarterly meeting at West Farmington, where I delivered a pointed discourse on Acts 16, 31, 32, which was blessed to some souls. Friday 22 The Episcopal Church was open at Litchfield, where I preached with very little faith on the love of Christ. I think Morse's account of his countrymen is near the truth. Never have I seen any people who would talk so long, so correctly, and so seriously about trifles. Saturday, 23. By a rocky, mountainous way, we came to Cornwall in the midst of the harvest home. 
we had about one hundred and fifty hearers. I had openings of mind, whilst I spoke on First Peter 3, 15. Sunday 24 Came to Canaan after preaching at a new meeting-house. Here naught would satisfy but my going to the ancient Presbyterian church. I reluctantly complied, and made a feeble attempt, on Luke eleven thirteen. I offended, and was offended. The people seemed uneasy, and wished to be gone. This is the first, and I expect will be the last time I shall speak in that house, if not in that place. Twenty-five years ago, the people in this place had religion. At present, it is to be feared, there is little or none. How it is, I know not. But at such places I feel dreadfully, as if such people were the worst of all under the sun, and at the greatest distance from God. Wednesday 27 Although under considerable affliction of body and mind, I rode over rough ways to New Britain, where, in general, the people appeared unfeeling. Nevertheless, I found a few among them who felt the need of Christ. I was led to exhort them, and to pray with them. I am persuaded some are not far from the kingdom of God. New York, Thursday, 28. I felt some freedom at teas while speaking on Second Timothy 3, 16. The length of the ride, and the languor of my bodily powers, had not enfeebled my mind. We found some gracious souls in the society. Friday, 29. Came to Albany my mind felt impressed with the value of the souls in this place. By the curves I have made in my course from Hartford to this place, I suppose I have not traveled less than one hundred and fifty miles. Perpetual motion is no small trial to my body and mind, but I must cast my care upon the Lord. I am led to think the Eastern Church will find this saying hold true in the Methodists, namely, I will provoke you to jealousy by a people that were no people, and by a foolish nation will I anger you. They have trodden upon the Quakers, the Episcopalians, the Baptists. See now if the Methodists do not work their way. The people will not pay large money for religion if they can get it cheaper. I preach to about three hundred people in a barn at Cayman's Patent, the new stone church not being ready. Our society is promising in this place. Tuesday, August 2. Came to Hudson. I felt disagreeable sensations, a chill, hoarseness, headache, and fever. Wednesday 3. The day was unusually warm, and I was sick and felt like Jonah. I was ready to faint in my carriage. At last, through mercy, I arrived safe at kind Sister L's. I went to bed, took some chicken broth, and after a comfortable sleep felt revived. No more rest. I took the road again, and arrived at Rhinebeck by noon. My soul is in peace. I want more prayer, patience, life, and love. I walk daily, hourly, and sometimes minutely with God. Saturday 6 I had a few serious people at the Mountain Meeting House. I lodged at C's, who was formerly a shaking Quaker. Sunday 7 We received the sacrament, and then went to a small grove, where we had a green carpet of nature spreading underneath, and an umbrella of variegated leaves above us. I preached on Zechariah 12.10, to about a thousand or twelve hundred people, as it was judged. I felt solemn and recollected, and was assisted in speaking. I had some faith to believe it would be the beginning of days, and of a revival of religion. Connecticut Preached at Salisbury on Acts 5, 31-32. My mind is in peace. I came to Sharon, time enough to preach at three o'clock. The women crowded the house, whilst the men stood at the door, with patient attention, in the rain, which indeed many seemed scarcely to perceive. I spoke with life and freedom on Ephesians 2, 8-10. through 10. 
here are some praying souls. I read, much to my comfort, Corbett's memoirs of the secrets of his heart, brought to public view after his death. End of section 13. Recording by Brian Keenan.